morning, Wesley Chapel family and friends. We're so grateful that you have joined us to worship on this Pentecost morning. It is a day that we celebrate Jesus sending forth the Holy Spirit as he came so many years ago. Today we still celebrate the work of the Holy Spirit in our midst and we're so grateful that you have joined us for worship. May God bless you as we share together. Let us pray. Holy and awesome are you, Almighty God, and how good it is to come into your house. And even though the place that is your house is spread out among all of our homes as we are watching and as we are worshiping together and um, together while apart, God, we just praise you that your spirit can be in many places drawing our hearts together as one. Thank you, gracious God, for your work of your Holy Spirit, for the outpouring that continues to be upon the church. And God, we pray for the difficulties of these days, and we pray for the divisions that exist among us in this world. We pray for those who hate. We pray for those who hurt. We pray for those who have been martyred. We pray for those who have lost so much. We pray for those who are struggling in their loneliness. We pray for those who have struggled in isolation during the quarantine, especially those who live alone. We pray for those who are dealing with illnesses, Lord, during what is already a very difficult time. For those who are, um, have had surgical procedures, for those who have um, difficulties and are receiving therapies and treatments, God. Um, for those who had anticipated having surgery and have had to put it off for one reason or another. God, for all of your people who are struggling, we ask your Holy Spirit continue to pour out and bring the peace, the peace that passes understanding. And bring the power of your love that we would know that we, as your people, are all your children, God. We are all favored by you. Forgive us, God, we pray, when we go astray. Forgive us, God, when we have sinned against you by thought, word, or deed. Forgive us, God, when we've done it to another. We've done it unto you, and when we've not done it to another, we've not done it unto you. And so, God, we pray that we would love one another, just as you have called us to love in your name. By the power of your spirit, bless us now as we worship together. As we worship in music and song, as we worship and sharing scripture and celebrating the story of who you are among your people. Bless us, God. Let us be agents of your mercy and your grace and your justice in this world. We praise you and we thank you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hello everyone, if you're watching this on Sunday, May 31st, today is my birthday. I share this birthday with Clint Eastwood, Joe Namath, Daryl McDaniels, best known as DMC from the rap group Run DMC, and most importantly today, the church. Today is Pentecost, the day that we celebrate the arrival of God's Holy Spirit and to all who believe. Robert Baer says this, that Bethlehem is God with us, Calvary is God for us, and Pentecost is God in us. The imagery that we use most often to describe the Holy Spirit is wind or fire. And both of these incredible forces have the power to reshape the landscape in a significant way. And if ever we needed our world to be made over by love, it's now. So I invite you to surrender your life, to receive the power that comes with the Holy Spirit and to be moved so that you can be a part of reshaping the world around us.
so gather the children around. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the special day in the life of the church today. Today is called Pentecost Sunday, and it is the day that we celebrate that the Holy Spirit poured out among the disciples. You might remember the story. The disciples, after Jesus had died, risen from the dead, and ascended, ascended into heaven, Jesus told them to wait, for he was sending power from on high. That power was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And here's what happened. The disciples and the followers of Jesus were gathered together in one place, the Bible says. They were in one place, and suddenly they heard what was like the howling of a very loud wind, and they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire above the heads of those gathered in that room. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit was so powerful that they spilled out into the street and they began to tell people about Jesus and how much he loved and how much he wanted them to accept him and to love him. Some say that that day was the birthday of the church. Who likes to celebrate a birthday? I do. And part of the celebration of a birthday is that you got to have some cake. And so today I have Hostess Cupcakes and I wish I had the ability to get one to each and every one of you, but maybe your mom will let you have a cake or a cookie and you remember and celebrate that it's the birthday of the church. But today we celebrate that the Holy Spirit among the church, because the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, then the church was born and the church is all the people, you and me and all of those who love Jesus who celebrate that he is alive through the power of the Holy Spirit. So why don't we sing Happy birthday to the church, because why not? Happy birthday to you. together. You repeat after me. Dear God, we love you and we thank you for Jesus that he came and he lived and he died and he rose again. We thank you that he sent us the Holy Spirit to live among us now so that we would know your love. Thank you for the church, God, where we celebrate who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, pull out your Bibles with me if you would, and let us read from the second chapter of Acts. I thought you were already there because you know that that's the reading for Pentecost Sunday. The second chapter of Acts, beginning with verse 1, we're going to bring read 1 through uh, 12. 21, and then we're going to jump over to, well, I'll tell you. We're going to jump over to 42 after that. So listen now for the word of the Lord. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in their own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it then that each of us hears them in his own native language? We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven. He raised his voice and he addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. 
These are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this was what was spoken by the prophet Joel. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your old will dream dreams. Even on my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And then let us move over to verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. The believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They both broke bread in their homes, and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and awesome God, we thank you for this day to celebrate the arrival of your Holy Spirit. And we celebrate the movement of your Holy Spirit every day. Come Holy Spirit, fall upon us and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit and we shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O oh God, who by the power of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, impart to us your word this day, that we might see and know and believe in you. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the day of Pentecost. What were they doing? The disciples. Last week we talked about ascension. Ascension happened 10 days prior to the day of Pentecost. Penta in the church being the 50th day after Easter when we celebrate Jesus' resurrection. And so we think about the disciples doing what Jesus had told them to do as he ascended into heaven. He said, I will send great power and you will go forth and you will baptize all nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But he said, before you go, wait because I'm sending another one to be with you. And so we learn from scriptures that the believers were all gathered together in one room. Now that's not just the 11 apostles and the one new apostle that had been elected and brought into the fellowship, but that was the believers who followed Jesus. There were about 120 at that time who were gathered together. And as they waited for the power of the Holy Spirit, we talked about last week that they didn't wait idly, like twirling their thumbs. The scripture says that they, they shared together in the temple and they were constantly praising God and sharing together in the temple as they waited for the Spirit. Can you imagine being in that room and everything shut up tight? Perhaps they were still afraid that they might be persecuted for being followers of Jesus. I can only imagine that the windows and the doors were barred tight. When all of a sudden the sound of what seemed like a howling wind and what seemed like fire appeared over the heads of the believers. You know, the Holy Spirit is so powerful and the wind and the fire is explained there in such a way um, to try and describe what the Holy Spirit is like. But note that it, it doesn't say the wind began to blow. It said the sound of that which was like a wind and what seemed to be tongues of fire. We don't, really even, we don't even really have words to describe the power of the visual and emotional and spiritual presence of the Holy Spirit. But fire, fire is a good analogy for the Holy Spirit because of what fire does. I remember one time Maurice and I were um, on a vacation and we were able to go into the Okefenokee Swamp. Most people don't want to go into the Okefenokee Swamp, but we did. We were canoeing and we went because we wanted to see nature and we wanted to see the alligators. And when we got into uh, the swamp as we were canoeing through it and enjoying nature, we noticed that there had been a forest fire at some point 
in the um, in the swamp, and that a lot of the trees had been burned. And um, and the the park rangers would tell us that that's one thing that happens in nature sometimes that fire cleanses and then replenishes the earth so that things can continue to grow. And, and what we learn from when fires do happen is that what really kindles fire is fire. You've heard it said, nothing kindles fire but fire. Even firefighters, when they're fighting major, major fires uh, to stop the fire, they will start another fire, a line of fire that will burn against the fire that's coming to contain the spread of the fire. Nothing but fire kindles fire. On that day of Pentecost, while the disciples were waiting, they were waiting for something. They didn't know exactly what it was that was coming, but they knew that it was going to be good because Jesus spoke it. And Jesus, they had learned, is true to his word. And he had promised the Holy Spirit. Fire, rushing wind, tongues of fire. That day, as we talked with the children, was the beginning of the birth of church. And in fact, I didn't read that verse, but uh, let's see, what verse is it? Um, verse 41, those who accepted the message, the part that I didn't read was, was Peter's sermon. Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit, as the believers flow into the street, Peter stands up and he begins to preach. And what he is preaching and what the disciples are saying and the many different languages that they have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to speak as they spilled out into the streets, what they began to speak is the story of Jesus and of his sacrifice and that he was the Messiah and that his power and that his death gave forgiveness of sins. The scripture says that that day the power of God was so powerful and so mighty speaking through Peter as he preached and among the disciples as they shared with the people that in verse 41 it says that that day those who accepted this message were baptized and about 3,000 people were added to their number that day. Powerful, powerful day. It was the work of Christ spreading across the whole world. And that happens because nothing but fire kindles fire. Another quote about fire. If you want to set someone on fire, you have to burn a little bit yourself. Hmm. I remember when I was in college, uh, my dad had taken a pottery class when he was in college, and so as an elective, I took a pottery class, and I fell so deeply in love with um, doing pottery that I changed my major and changed the focus, it really changed the focus of my life, and for a while I was a potter. And one of the techniques that we learned was raku, and the technique of raku pottery, you put the the a piece in a fire and while it is glowing red hot you take it out of the fire and you reduce it in something we were using pine needles and we had a trash can a metal trash can with a lid and we took this red hot pot out of the out of the fire with tongs of course and we put it in this trash can and put the lid on for it to reduce that's what caused the colors to change on the pottery it was very exciting and, and I couldn't wait to see and we had been warned to be very careful when we took the lid off. And I thought I was being careful, but when I took the lid off and the oxygen got a hold of the heat in there, it, the flame blew up and it singed my hair and burned my eyebrows completely off. <laughs> if you want to get someone set on fire, you have to get a little bit burned yourself sometimes. The work of the Holy Spirit in the apostles right then and on that day and from there was so significant. Jesus had told them that they would go to places. We talked about this last week. That they would go to Jerusalem. That they would go to Judea. Even Samaria where people were different and believed differently. Even to the ends of the earth. They set about the business of spreading the gospel but not just as they had heard, not just as they had read in the paper or seen in the news, but as they experienced it firsthand. They were witnesses of the work and the life of Jesus, and now they were witnesses and experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit within them. Why did it work, and why is it still working today? Because if you want to set someone on fire, you have to burn a little bit yourself. 
my third and last quote that I want to talk about. A burning heart will soon fire it, find for itself a flaming tongue. A burning heart will soon find for itself a flaming heart. In verses 1 um, through 4, um, it says that there were many different people um, gathered in Jerusalem for the festival um, of weeks, which was a celebration of the harvest. And um, the, the harvest, it was a celebration of the first fruits, all that God had done for the people and they wanted to give back to God. Um, so the many different nations that were present in Jerusalem um, from many different places spoke many different languages. When the Holy Spirit moved among those people, God did it in such a way that everybody had access to the movement of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes into a person's life and heart, you really have to tell somebody. And that good news and that power that the disciples experienced that day was too good for them to keep for themselves. They knew that it was it was it would have been like fire shut up in their bones. They had to let it out. They had to share. The burning heart will find for itself a flaming tongue. Peter's sermon the same guy that denied Jesus, not once, twice, but three times. The same guy who said, no, you'll never wash my feet, Jesus. The same guy that walked on water for a little bit until the water began to splash on his legs. And he went, oh, I can't walk on water. And he had to cry out to Jesus. That same Peter was the one who, through whom the power and the story of Jesus Christ was spoken on that day. What a change the Holy Spirit made in his life. What a change the Holy Spirit made in a lot of people's lives that day. As I said earlier, there were about 3,000 people that came to believe that day because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Wow. We get excited when one person gets moved for the Holy Spirit in church. And, and that's enough. But imagine 3,000 people in one day being baptized by the apostles. Just imagine. Get a picture of that in your brain. 3,000 people lined up uh, to receive their baptism and to celebrate what the Holy Spirit was doing in their hearts and the story that they too then had to share. Then there's a new normal. That's a phrase we're hearing a lot lately, isn't it? A new normal. We don't know as a church or as people who have been in quarantine what our new normal is going to look like. Some people say we're not going to be able to hug anymore or shake hands. Some people say, well, well and, and on our state, uh, a law has been passed that if you're in a public place, you have to wear a mask now. Um, it's for the protection of people. It's for the safety of people. What will our new normal look like when this pandemic is over? How will we celebrate? How will we worship? How will we work? How will we go to school? It's all part of the new normal. That we will experience. I'm trusting God to move in the midst of pandemic. I'm trusting God to move in the midst of people who have been touched by his spirit, who have been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, much like the day of Pentecost. Here's what the new, new believers did. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They had so much to learn. So many stories about Jesus' life that I know they wanted to hear. And some who were converts to, converts to Judaism um, had to learn about um, how Jesus was prophesied in the Old Testament and how the law and the prophets and the Psalms had prophesied that the Messiah would come and that Jesus was that Messiah. Some people didn't even know those prophecies in that part. And, and then there were those in the early church who argued, do you have to be a Jew before you can be a Christian? And the answer was no, that God's spirit is for everyone and that Jesus died for everyone. What did they do that was different? They celebrated the teaching. They devoted themselves to fellowship. They devoted themselves to breaking bread, sharing meals together, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with all wonders, miracles happened around them. It says that they had everything in common. This week, some things that break the hearts of believers and, and people in general happened in our nation. Unthinkable injustice. 
things are happening around us that I know they grieve God's people and imagine how God's spirit must be grieved when we allow things to happen that divide us and that pull us apart. I know there are people in our church right now who are saying, I don't know why we can't go back to church yet. The governor said we could go back to church. Why can't we go back to church? We can't go back to church yet because it's not yet safe. It's not yet the time when we can get our um, people who are vulnerable safely in one room together. It's not yet time. But what will our new norm look like? Whatever the new norm looks like, we will all have all things in common. Because if we have Jesus Christ in our hearts and our lives, if we allow the power of the Holy Spirit to live and move and have his being in and through us, then the new norm looks like God's people loving each other and God's people loving the world. We're already having to find new expressions of that. And every day I know um, you're missing people. I want to encourage you to let them know that you're missing them. Pick up the phone and call them. Text them. Pick up a pen and a piece of paper even and write them a letter so that when they go to the mailbox it won't just be junk mail and bills but that it will be a note from somebody saying I love you and I miss you. See, even though we're apart, we have so much more in common because of the love of God through His Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit who enables us to know and to believe in the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Because of that, today, we have the power. We have the power so that our new norm looks like Jesus if we allow it. Today, will you sing with me a hymn that we almost always sing on Pentecost Sunday? Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Sing it with me right where you are. today and we thank you. 
We thank you for the fresh anointing of your spirit. We thank you for the new normal that we are experiencing now and the new normal that we will experience in the days and weeks and months to come. That however we are shaped and formed, it will look like you. It will look like God's people, renewed by the sharing of God's love, reminded that they are forgiven through the poured out blood and the broken body of Jesus Christ the Savior. It will look like people who love each other even though we are different. Bring your new norm into our midst, God. Let your spirit be what drives us. Let your spirit be what inspires us to do and to be and to act and to show the love of God through Christ Jesus. God, we thank you for this time of worship together again. We thank you for the opportunity and the technology to be able to share with one another and your love and your grace, to be able to share your word together. Thank you, God. Until we gather together again, continue to bind us together in your love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's children said,
I know this is not what we want. I know that the timing is difficult and that we're aching to be back together. Um, our church uh, reach teams met this week and have come up with some strategies for trying to connect us with folks um, through internet, through um, mailings, through um, telephone calls, and um, we'll continue to do that. Again, we'll give you some more information this week as we make some further decisions. Um, we haven't been released to have um, church face-to-face -face yet, um, so those decisions will be coming. Your new pastor, Patrick Pillow, has joined us on our Healthy Church team. It's a joy to meet him, and I know the folks on our Healthy Church team enjoy getting to meet him. And so he is having a voice as we prepare later, uh, about a month from now, to make the transition in pastoral leadership here at Wesley Chapel. Just know that your outgoing and your incoming pastor already are know and respect and love each other in the Lord, and that we are working for what we believe is for the good of our church and our community. So stay tuned, uh, we'll give you more information. But before we go, right now, Donnie's going to give you some information about a little fellowship time opportunity that's coming this week. God bless you. Hello, church family. This is Donnie Newton coming to you live from Wesley Chapel. Um, just so uh, I wanted to reach out to you. I had a conversation with Michelle a few days back, and she asked me a question that I had, <clears throat> I struggled to answer. And that question was, where have you seen Jesus, Donnie? Tell me where you've seen Jesus. And, you know, I think for the first time in my adult spiritual life, I struggled with the answer to that. And one of the reasons was because I'm missing my church family. Uh, like you all, you know, I've been trying to stay quarantined and limit my uh, association face-to-face -face with folks. But I've really missed this place. I've missed you. I missed every one of you. And, you know, the, the Bible tells us that we should come together in fellowship and worship and praise God. Well, our circumstances are a little bit different. We can't come together physically, but we can still do it with this thing now called Zoom. Uh, and it's a wonderful thing. I, I did my first Zoom meeting last night. It was great to see a lot of folks. So, all that said and done, this coming Wednesday night, June the 2nd, I believe, uh, at 7 o'clock, we're going to host a Zoom meeting. It's just going to be a time of fellowship. Uh, there's no real Bible study agenda. There's no uh, there's not going to be any preaching kind of thing. It's just going to be us getting together on Zoom and uh, just having a time of fellowship and uh, just kind of talking to one another, seeing each other's faces after almost three months now. So we're going to send a link out to you through your email so that you can join us. Zoom is a real easy thing to connect to. If you're struggling with that or you don't know how, let us know. We'll help you walk, uh, we'll walk you through that. Susan Elmore is wonderful with it. She'll be glad to spending some quality time with you, getting you through that. So, hope to see you Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Come join us on Zoom and uh, see some of the folks that you haven't seen in a while. God bless you. Hello, everybody. My name is Joy, for those of you that don't know me. And I'm just um, stopping to give an update on our plastic bag collection that we've been doing for the past two years. Two years ago, everybody in the church looked at me crazy when I told them that we were going to start this project partnering with Trex, and what we would have to do is collect 500 pounds of plastic bags and other soft plastics. Um, they didn't think that it could be done in a six-month time, um, and we ended up having way more than 500 pounds regularly. Um, to this day, we've earned five benches and we're halfway to our sixth. Um, because we only needed four, we have decided to gift our extra two that are, were our goal to the Agape Center, which is a recreation center um, that our youth group does mission trips to. And even though they can't go this year, we're still going to give them the two benches that we promised. Um, with that said, during this time, the pandemic, um, we've still had bags showing up at the church and with the reality of um, us trying to get back into the church, we are going to ask that you please hold on to your bags for now. We don't want you to stop collecting because we're still not to our sixth bench goal yet, but we do ask that you hold on to them until 
things calm down a little bit and we can figure out a safe way to keep collecting these bags that we're not putting anybody at risk. Thank you. God bless.